everybody. Welcome to the Purple People Podcast, a proud member of the Sports Authority Network. I'm Kyle West, and alongside me is the great and powerful Adam Carlson. Oh, uh, yeah. Today, <laughs> doing pretty good. I just wanted to welcome everyone. Uh, reminding everyone, iTunes, TSAN, Podomatic, YouTube, listen to us at all those places. Don't pick just one. Listen to us on all of them. No, I'm don't, you don't have to do that, but at least try try to listen on one. Uh, visit the Facebook page, join in the conversation, uh, comments, likes. Uh, just get to know some other Vikings fans or football fans if you're not a Vikings fan. Uh, it spans past just the Vikings. I mean, football's football. Enjoy it. But I'd also like to issue a correction from last week. Uh, on the show, we stated that the quote about Percy Harvin not returning under the 2013 contract um, from Harvin himself, and it was actually from Tom Palacero at 1500 ESPN. Uh, it doesn't change much as far as feeling the story or the relevance, but I just wanted to lay out that correction and thank our friends at the Minnesota Vikings fan page for pointing it out. Yep, it was actually um, the way that story was wrote. Um, and my personal opinion is that it made it look like it was a direct quote from Percy Harvin and not from Tom. Um, they should. I, th I think they should have done a little bit better job of clarifying where it was coming from. Yeah, we actually had to trace down the origins of that article pretty hard um, at, until the Minnesota Vikings fan page really got a hold of me and you know directed me towards helping me out figure out what was going on there. And I really do appreciate that. Thanks again, guys. You're doing a good, great job over there. Yep, we appreciate all the feedback that we get from each and every single one of you, no matter how crazy or insane it may be from time to time. <laughs> Um, why don't exactly. you go ahead and um, start us off with our top story for the day, though, Adam? Speaking of crazy and insane, we have a quote this week from Jared Allen. The great uh, and powerful might... Jared Allen. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This time it actually applies, though. Uh, he gave a quote in an interview that the media has just grabbed. And I'm going to read off this quote, and I want you to listen to it and let me know what you think. Okay. Uh, the quote is... Uh, when he's, he, he's talking about Matt Khalil when he says this. He says, just don't touch me. I'm too old to deal with overzealous rookies right now. Keep your hands out of my face. Don't grab my jersey and we won't have to fist fight. That's pretty much what it is. And that's the quote. Uh, how did that strike you, Kyle? Well, I read the quote and I was like, uh, Jared, excuse me, what, what is going on? Why are you so angry towards Matt I Khalil? Um, I was pretty ticked off and thinking, great, what is Jared going to be saying he wants a trade next? Like, like what, what, this is the last thing we need. What's going on? Well, then um, we tracked down the, uh, the video interview um, that it came from, and it puts it in a completely different context. Um, this quote was completely taken out of the middle of a longer um, – interview that he did and uh basically vikings fans you don't have anything to worry about it was jared joking around uh, when he was saying this but what one of the things you really got to think about is that there is a small amount of truth to every joke you know whether you want to think it or not now i doubt that any defensive end likes getting hands in their face or being held at least not on a football field anyway and I'm sure that Jared Allen isn't a young guy by NFL standards, but he'll do his best to teach Matt Khalil everything it takes to succeed. He's never really seemed to be that kind of guy that was afraid to get his jersey tugged or anything like that. Um, but I really do look forward to seeing the relationship between the two develop. I mean, I'm talking about Khalil and Allen here, mm -hmm. uh, especially in the practice field leading up to the season. Oh, yeah, they'll definitely be, um, be good for one another. Um, just having Jared Allen lining up. Um, opposite of Matt Khalil is going to help Matt um, be prepared for the NFL season. That, that's, I don't know. That's a, I think I it's a great benefit for Charlie him. Johnson. Well, Charlie Johnson is... Uh, <laughs> is not Matt Khalil, hopefully. I, I had to censor myself on that one for I, <laughs> I, I broke our quote. Our, um, I felt quote you holding back. Swearing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I don't remember what I was going to say next. <laughs> Well, uh, Jared Allen ended the interview by saying, I don't know what our expectations are, and that can be a good thing. Coming off a 3-13 and season, no one expects us to do anything, so we can fly under the radar, focus on being a solid team, and putting win after win together. 
Now, that doesn't sound like the quote from a guy who wouldn't mind fist fighting his rookie first round draft pick and possible franchise left tackle, does it? <laughs> well, like I said, when you actually listen to the interview that he gave, it's your typical Jared Allen where he's got a big smile on his face and he's chuckling in between saying things like that. So, uh,. Well, the media loves to grab bits and pieces like this and just twist them. We saw it a while back ago with the Harvin quote that we had to apologize for earlier. Yeah. I mean, maybe it's just because I'm a Vikings fan and I read Vikings news, but it seems to happen quite a bit to the Vikings. Yeah, it does. Um, it's the, the NFL has it out for Minnesota for whatever reason. I think anyone who follows this team can agree with that. Um, shit, you watch NFL Network... And uh, they'll do every other team's highlights. And even when we've got Brett Favre on the team. And, and here's the Vikings box score. Yeah, and he's throwing for <laughs> nine touchdowns. And it's just the most awesome game you've ever seen. It's, they won't do any kind of recap for it. They'll go, oh, no. Minnesota won. The, let, let's talk <laughs> about Tim Tebow some more. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, you had to get it in, didn't you? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> now, did you see? Did you see how Matt Khalil got him back? Uh, no, actually, I didn't. All right, so Matt Khalil did get him back. He took to Twitter, as most celebrities do these days, and he tweeted the following, and I quote: "I'll try not to be overzealous in camp, but if I am, I got a gift for you." And then he posted a picture of a wheelchair. <laughs> Oh, man, I like Matt Khalil a lot. And, uh, <laughs> it seems to be a good dynamic building between the two. I, I, I'm excited to see it. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, so it seems like I, I like I like the way that Matt is standing up for himself already. And not going to take well, it. Even, even though Jared's joking with him, he's like, hey, I'm not going to take your crap. This I is like the kind that. of relationship that I think has been missing from the team over the years. It's been, uh, especially under Childress, it was all about profesh being professional. You know, this is how you do it. This is how you do it. And Frazier's a bit more lenient. You know, he'll let people have fun and play. And that's one of the things that can help a team grow together. And that's what I want to see. And it's ironic that Brad Childress was trying to be that professional because he was probably one of the least professional head coaches we <laughs> had had in a long time. That his, is very true. His jabs that he would take at players during his uh, post-game press conferences. Huh. I, <laughs> I, I doubt we'll see something like that from Frazier. Yeah, we won't. <laughs> but speaking of Frazier, he's got a tough uh, decision coming up on his hands. Do you know why? He's got to figure out um, punt returns. He does. That leads yep. us into our next topic about who will handle the punt and the kick returns this year. Percy um, Harvin. <laughs> I'm just going to go out and that, say yeah, it. Yeah, before, right out there. Before you even get into your list of people that you have, I, I do. Just, I have a look here. I, I'm going to go into my tirade. Make Percy Harvin do it. Like I said before, if he wants to earn his big fat new contract, well, he can get his butt out there on punt returns and uh, <laughs> run with the ball as fast as he can. That's what he needs. All right, now let's talk about some options that, you know, might not just cripple Percy Harvin in the long run here. <laughs> okay. okay. Let's, let's talk about uh, some of the guys that Frazier mentioned in interviews about having the return jobs. Uh, let's start with Jarius Wright. Okay. Um, now, I'm not 100% sure. I think he likes to be called Jay Wright, which doesn't sound right to me in my head, but um, I for don't now, know. Just, I kind of like Jarius. that. I kind of like that. We need more players with cool nicknames on the, on the team. We only got two or three. And... Jay is not a cool nickname for Jarius. Jarius is way cooler. Well, yeah, but Jay Wright, like with a little hyphen in the middle. like A yeah. hyphen? Yeah. No. no. No, no, no. You got to hyphen. You got to hyphenate it with like the letter J, like Jay Wright. Uh, you're not going to win this one with me. I, I'm I'm sticking with Jarius. But anyway. Hey, I'm going to copyright <laughs> that. I'm going to copyright Jay Wright. Like what I should have got the copyright on the Blair Walsh project. Uh, I don't know. But uh, Jarius Wright is the back wide, rec wide receiver for the slot behind Percy Harvin. Uh, he was one of the Vikings' fourth-round draft choices this year. He's 5'10", 182 pounds. Uh, his 40 time at the Combine was 4.41. Now, uh, let's see, what else do we got here? We got uh, Josh Robinson. Uh, we talked about him last week. Uh, he's currently competing for the nickel corner job. Uh, 
Robinson was the return man at UCF, and he was the Vikings' third-round pick this year. He's also 5'10", and he weighs 199 pounds, but his 40 time was 4.29, which is pretty considerably faster than Jarius Wright. And the last guy that he mentioned was Marcus Shirelles. Now, he is the backup player. He's a backup player in the secondary. Uh, he's the hometown boy, born and raised in Rochester, Minnesota. Uh, went to the University of Minnesota. Uh, he didn't go to the combine, but he ran a 40 time of 4.37 at his pro day. He's 5'9", 175. Uh, last year, he shared the job with who? Uh, uh, Percy Harvin. <laughs> Lorenzo Booker. Oh, Lorenzo Booker. Let's not even. <laughs> Lorenzo fumbled the ball every time he got it. <laughs> well, Lorenzo Booker is now a Chicago Bear. He signed a one-year contract. But um. C congratulations Sherelle... to Lorenzo Booker. We wish him well <laughs> in his future endeavors. Half of us wish him well. <laughs> <laughs> but um, if Sherelle's wants to win the return job. You know, that's what he'll probably have to do to make the final roster. Either that or have a very impressive showing at training camp, because for him, he is on the roster bubble. Definitely. It's interesting to note that guys like Brian Walters and Nicholas Taylor weren't mentioned in the competition. I'm assuming at this point that both these guys are camp bodies and developmental guys. Uh, it is strange to not include them in the conversation, though, as if they're not even going to be part of the competition. Well, you know, it's a really large competition for every for multiple spots on the team right now so just because he maybe didn't directly mention them this time doesn't necessarily mean that they're not a, a front runner or in the running so to speak um for the for the punt returns uh they could very well be the black sheep i i really think it's completely open and it's one of the things that we should look for um I think uh, I mean during, Dark During horse. training camp. Dark not horse. Black Jeep. <laughs> yeah, Black Jeep, Dark Horse, that's not the same. But um, I wouldn't completely discount the possibility of Percy Harvin returning punts in a close game. Uh, he Percy Harvin will have a bigger workload at wide receiver, and I don't see him doing nearly as much with the punt returns as he did in the past with kicks and punt returns. Uh, the make him do it. <laughs> make him do it. I, I know you want to see it. You want to see it. I want to see him do it. Now, the competition will be fast and furious for the position, but I think in the end it'll come down to Wright and Robinson. When all's said and done, I think Josh Robinson will totally shine in training camp and should come away with the job. That's my prediction. And, uh, yeah, actually, Josh Robinson, um, I tend to agree with you. I now, think... I'm not saying that because, you know, the Call of Duty connection. I'm not, it's, it's not favoritism <laughs> here. I mean, the guy's cool and everything, but I, I think that based on talent, he will be, he will get the job. Speaking of talent or lack of talent, let's talk about Michael Jenkins. Ooh. <laughs> um, we talked about roster bubbles um, and players maybe not necessarily making the team. Well, the rumor um, that's coming out here recently is that Michael Jenkins is on the roster bubble. I have been reading that. Yep, and he may not be 100% over his injury. Um, his meniscus tear, I believe it was. Yep, so that could uh, definitely affect his uh, his status as a Minnesota Viking coming in. So uh, what do you think? Do we need him? Do we need Michael Jenkins moving forward on this team? Well, the complaint I'm hearing from most people is that Michael Jenkins' salary is too high for his contribution. Now, Michael Jenkins has a base salary this year of $2.5 million. But there is a good reason for this. He's got veteran leadership, and past him on the team, the wide receiver experience is pretty bad. I mean, you got Roma Shodu, five years. You got Harvin, who's for four years might hold out, demands trades. A Roma Shodu might not make the roster this year. You're yeah, looking I, at some I'm, problems coming up here. I'm not convinced that Devin even makes this team past the uh, no, he, he might past not. the preseason point. He's been in the NFL long enough that uh, at some point you are what you are, and I don't know if Devin Aroma should do is ever going to be any more than what he currently is. 
You know what I'd I mean? I'd love to see him succeed, but he's been dropping too many footballs. Um, he, it seems like he can get open, but until he can make the plays, I don't see it happening. But um, back to Michael Jenkins. Uh, people are talking about him like he's Albert Hainsworth here, you know? <laughs> like making that kind of money and not producing. I mean, come on, guys. $2.5 million really isn't that much in NFL terms. Uh, you got to start by looking at it. Okay, 200000 of it is going to be paid out by the Falcons from his, from a buyout from the from the previous team. Mm-hmm. Uh, then you got to look at what his base salary was last year. That was $1 million. $1 million. He did the Vikings a favor taking a backloaded contract last year so the Vikings could have enough money for their cap to sign guys like McNabb and, you know, the other guys that they had to get in there. So, so basically you're saying we can blame Michael Jenkins for Donovan McNabb? <laughs> We're saying that we can <laughs> praise Michael Jenkins I got for you there. <laughs> the to succeed. That's what we're saying. Oh. He, he, took, he did that as a favor. Okay. And sometimes it frustrates me when people can be so nearsighted that they only see the right now and don't care about the things that people have done to help and are ready to kick people to the curb as soon as things are convenient. I mean, I've dated women like that. It sucks. Uh, okay, well, here's my take on Michael Jenkins. Um, he was brought in for one reason, because he came from Atlanta and he ran the same offense that Bill Musgrave was going to be bringing to Minnesota. Okay. And he was brought in at the same time that we were bringing in Donovan McNabb when that the team thought that we were going to be making a wild card playoff push. Um, right. We are clearly rebuilding. Right. So we don't need him for any kind of wild card playoff Super Bowl run. And uh, the team is going to have the second year of running Bill Musgrave's offense. I don't necessarily know if you need Michael Jenkins. Why would you want to roll with an older player? I would rather take a chance on someone like Stephen Burton and see what he can do than roll with Michael Jenkins. Now, with this said, when would it make sense to let him go after the third week of the regular season? Because Jerome Simpson is going to be suspended for the first three games. So If Jenkins I, is cut, that probably would be the time. Yes, I think it makes sense to keep him for the first, uh, three, the first three games of the regular season because we will be allowed to keep an extra player. Um, Jerome Simpson will not count towards our 53-man roster. And then when um, Simpson is ready to come back, then I think the Vikings go ahead and let go of Michael Jenkins. Um, and thank him for his services that he did on the team because he does seem like a good, you know, a good guy. He's a great role model in the locker room. I mean, and he's there to teach these younger guys. Uh, you know, on the field, he's a great blocker. The guys that are behind him, the current crop of wide receivers, they're not ready to step in on the outside yet. You got to look at guys like Child. He has to prove he can stay healthy. Aroma Shodu has to prove that he can drop less passes. Arkano needs to completely step up. Um, Jenkins isn't a flashy guy. He's not going to get you a ton of stats, but he's a solid contributor. You know what you're going to get from him. And that's the one thing I really like about Michael Jenkins. Yeah, he, he is definitely solid enough and reliable enough and he's not going to cause the problems of say a Bernard Berrien so no. if if Minnesota does go ahead and decide to uh, to keep him for the remainder of um, th- this coming season I would understand their reasonings for doing that and I would not be completely ticked off with them but like I said honestly I, I think after the third week that they need to cut ties with him and uh, maybe let him go on to, you know, some other team where he can contribute to that. Well, many people are saying that he's going to be completely unnecessary now, but I think they'll miss him when he's gone. Uh, they need to hold on to him for now and let the young guys develop under him. He can teach them. Uh, the only real reason not to have Jenkins on the 53-man roster, in my opinion, is if he continues to have the lingering problems from his meniscus tear. That's the only reason. If he's physically unable to compete at a high level, that level, then I'd understand his release. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, I just don't think it's smart football. Well, I guess we'll see how Rick Spielman handles this one. Maybe this could be uh, one of those little moments that tells how he's going to handle the team. Um, 
Well, the team on. had to make a lot of really tough decisions. I mean, they got rid of a lot of veterans this preseason already. I mean, when they got rid of Hutchinson and they got rid of Herrera. And Shanko. these are physical guys that were capable of doing their jobs. But they wanted to go younger and they wanted to compete. And um, Jenkins might be one of those guys that's left out in the cold on this. Well, I guess we will see. Um, let's go ahead and move on to the uh, next segment. This one is going to be fun. We are going to do the top five quarterbacks of the previous five years in Minnesota. So yes. we, we each have a list. Um, we're going to read. We're going to read our listings, and then we are going to um, debate who should be going where. I guess, right? We are. Um, we have not discussed our lists previous to this. Nope. Um, there's a high probability that uh, one of us is going to be higher on a guy than uh, than another one. Yep. <laughs> and that that should be the fun of this. And then we'll debate as to who should be where and why. Okay. So I'm I'm going to go ahead and kick this one off. Um, I'm going to do mine with number five and work my way up to who I think is the number one quarterback. Okay. So at number five, I have Joe Webb. At number four, I have Christian Ponder. Number three, Tavares Jackson. Number two, Gus Farratt. And number one, the great and powerful Brett Favre. Wow. That is quite a bit different than mine. Let's, let's see what you got. I have Joe Webb at number five. Okay. I have Gus Farratt at number four. I have T-Jack at number three. Okay. I have Ponder at two, and I have Favre at one. We were pretty close. We both had Webb at five. We had the same five guys in the top five. Um, neither of us had Donovan McNabb, you know, Mr. Less Than 40 Yards Passing in a Game. <laughs> Which is not oh. surprising. But um, the big differences on ours seem to be between Farrat and Ponder. Yeah. So why were you so high on Farrat? Well, I got Gus Farad at number two um, because when he was with the team, he had an 8-3 record in 2008. And the only reason is that, you know, he got injured and Tavares Jackson had to come in and screw up the remainder of the season for him. <laughs> um, but uh, Gus Farad was a really solid quarterback for Minnesota. Um, he, he came in just like Minnesota's done a million times in the past a veteran quarterback at the tail end of his career and he came in and was a really solid um, production guy for the team tough as nails like what my friend Mike was talking about how he broke his finger and had blood gushing out all over the place and misses one play and comes back in and starts slinging the old football around like it's oh, I, no, I won't debate it. toughness man the, like the guy no is big tough deal. Like, yeah he was tougher than a two dollar steak <laughs> <laughs> but um one of the things that really get it really grinds my gears as it's on family guy there uh what the thing that really grinds my gears is when people talk about a team's record and apply them to only one player like when you just said gus farrat was eight and two or whatever you said eight, eight and three eight and three yep okay so he wasn't eight and three the team was well, eight and three with him at quarterback Exactly. But now, the quarter, quarterback is the one position that probably most directly relates to wins and losses on the team. If it doesn't, how else do you explain Donovan McNabb? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> well, he just came and had a bad year overall, but I, I think that wins and losses need to be... They, they can't be thrown on one person's shoulders. Uh I, I couldn't do that if I was a quarterback. Be like, you know, oh, you know, I had a tough season. I went uh, six and ten. No, I didn't go six and ten. Our team went six and ten. And it's all about the team. I mean, when you look at some of the guys on my list, Joe Webb. Now, if he'd have been on the same roster, now if he'd have been the quarterback of the '98 Vikings, you know, that would he have been moved up the list because it was a better team? Um, it depends on what he would have, I mean, what, what could have, what could Joe Webb have done with the 98 squad? Probably good things. I mean, cause he would have had such great wide receivers to work with. Um, 
That's why I you would have put him. You would have put him records. higher on the list. I, I hate using win loss records for that reason, and that's one reason why I have my guys listed in the order that I feel that their potential was. You know, I, I, I took a look. I, I looked past, you know, the drop passes. I looked past the team records, and I saw, you know, I have T Jack at number three because I, I just. I liked what I saw from him at times, you know. I liked what I saw more from him than Webb because he was able to stay in the pocket and, you know, at least attempt to deliver passes and try to make some reads. Uh, but I have Ponder higher than T-Jack because he's got that patience and the football smarts. You know, it's like my number one Brett Favre. I shouldn't really have to defend that. Um, <laughs> that should be the high point for Vikings quarterbacks in, in the last five years. It should shouldn't really be up for debate um i know that we as vikings fans had to deal with a lot of uh a lot of brett Favre junk from packer fans and jet fans and uh the media and that girl that gets the texts and all that yeah. stuff you know but overall he was one of the best things to happen to this team he brought back a lot of the excitement and i think that if it wasn't for far coming back and playing guys like christian ponder wouldn't be getting the kind of excitement and interest that he is uh how do you feel about that statement uh that is that's a true statement i, I, I want to backtrack here a minute i want to make a point before i forget about it okay. um i listed my players on my list based on body of work and I felt that Tavares Jackson, uh, he was on the team for how, how many years? I don't remember precisely. Um, was drafted in what, 2006? He's been on the team for several years before I got uh, before I moved to greener pastures there in yeah. Seattle. Anyway, I mean, he had a much larger body of work than what Joe Webb does on the team. So it, even though it didn't work out for Tavares, it's not fair to rank I don't think Joe Webb higher than him right now because Webb has only started just a handful of games and came in for relief duty just a couple of times That's now I, I liked what I saw from Webb don't get me wrong um, I'd love to have him higher on my list um, I think he has the potential to learn how to make the reads go through the progressions I think he can do it and if he can he will definitely just shoot up this list but until then I, I just I can't move him past five I can't I agree with you and I got I, I got Christian Ponder sitting at four on my list now I think Christian has tremendous upside with this team right. he is going to go on to do great things and he'll he's so obviously going to be we hope later on in his career way above Tavares Jackson and uh, Gus Ferrat. I think but, that if Ponder can stay healthy he will cement himself as being the guy in Minnesota the major question with with me is his health and I've been reading that he's been bulking up during the offseason, putting on some weight so that he'll be able to take those hits better. Uh, and that, to me, is a good sign. And this is good weight. This is not Bryant McKinney weight, by the way. Right. He's also been putting on a lot of muscle. Yep. So we should see some increased arm strength, too, which is definitely uh, always something good to see because uh, when you got a quarterback that can sling the ball down the field to uh, an open Jerome Simpson, that's what you want to see. Yeah, That's definitely. exciting football right there. Yep. A guy that can't make that pass really is Joe Webb. He's got the arm strength, but he lacks the accuracy. Ponder has that accuracy, and for some reason, when he throws on the run, it seems to be more accurate, and I don't know how he does it. Joe but Webb for some reason, it's just amazing. Hold on here. I, Joe Webb is one of my favorite players on the team. Um, I will defend him to no other. He will learn how to be accurate. You've, I mean, I, I know sure, that... I'm, yeah. I, okay, okay, just making sure that we're <laughs> we're not completely dissing Joe no, Webb here. This isn't something he can't learn and develop. I mean, I liked what I saw from him, but for him to be uh, a very solid backup quarterback or even move into the realm of being, you know, a guy that pushes for a starting job, he will have to learn that. Joe Webb, I will go on the record right here and say that he has the it factor that will make him a starting quarterback in the NFL. Now, I, I see that in him. I really do. You give him. Now, do you see like a, a Vince Young kind of thing from him, or what do you see? 
Ah. Uh, I hate to, to use be honest, the... his his accuracy and his football intelligence just isn't quite there yet. And Sage Rosenfeld is going to have to take Joe Webb under his wing and say, "Here, this is what you got to do." I, I wish Favre would have been able to stay on as a mentor and, and Favre you know, was do never the, one to mentor people, though. No, I mean you just ask Aaron Rodgers about that. Like mentoring was not Brett Favre's thing. You wish it would have been because of how good he was at playing you wish that he would just come back and be like i'm gonna teach everything i know to christian ponder just to stick it to green bay but uh right yeah you'd, you'd love to see that but yep. um uh, apparently uh, from what i've read brett Favre is now an assistant coach for a high school football team yeah isn't that really cool <laughs> i think it's kind of odd that he passes up the glory because I've never seen Brett Favre pass up media to do something really f like that. Well, you know, he's going to get plenty of uh, media coverage. Oh, I'm, I'm sure he will, uh, but yeah. I think that if you were to come on to say like a, if you were to go back to Green Bay as a quarterback's coach, that would be all over the news. People would tune in to see him standing on the sidelines. You'd have Favre watch all over it, and even though he's not out there playing. And it could be possible that at this point in his life, he's ready to be done with that because he is, <laughs> what, 42? He's traded in his uh, football uniform for some Wranglers. Yeah, a permanent, a permanent pair of Wranglers for him. <laughs> <laughs> See, now we should... We're waiting for the shipment still from Taco Bell, and now I'm expecting some Wranglers, too. Yes. <laughs> I, I want the tacos inside the Wranglers, and I want them delivered to my house by 7 o'clock tomorrow. <laughs> That's right. Those are my demands. But overall, uh, we didn't have a whole lot of surprises on the list we didn't have any uh, kelly holcombs we didn't have uh, a whole lot of surprises there well i mean realistically you look at the people that minnesota has had on their team for the last five years and uh there's only really about five people that you can with a straight face put on a list and <laughs> and say that they were the best that we had on the team uh, I don't think anyone can make a case that Donovan McNabb did anything at all for this team when he was on it. Um, we Now, if we were to go back for the last 10 years... We'd be looking at some interesting interesting guys there. Yeah. The Vikings have brought in a lot of, uh, a lot of veterans that have earlier bodies of work that you'd have to judge. Um, it's weird that you know, we can only really evaluate them as a Viking. Like, if you were to take a look back at Gus Farratt's work before he was a Viking, there's some good stuff there, too. But we're only talking about the Vikings quarterbacks and what they've done to contribute to the Vikings. So I'm not looking at Brett Favre's, you know, Super Bowl win in Green Bay. I'm, I'm just looking at his what they, not what they Super did Bowl for win in Minnesota. Yeah. I'm going to throw you a curveball that we don't have actually scheduled here. Okay, okay. From the year 1990 to present day, who do you think was the best quarterback for the Minnesota Vikings? This is including Randall Cunningham, Dante Culpepper, Brett Favre. Uh, who I now, mean, I I loved watching Culpepper play. I did. It was so much fun. You know, you'd see the touchdown, you'd see him getting his roll on. It, it was just so much fun i i really enjoyed watching call pepper play it was a shame to see him you know with his injury and you know, never really coming back the same and you know watching him fizzle out with other teams it was sad pretty sad yeah i um i agree and you know what if dante would have uh, stayed healthy there's actually the possibility that he could well he would still be playing for Minnesota and could be playing at a high level for us um, uh, currently. Definitely possible. But if we're going from uh, 1990 to uh, to present day for like who my favorite quarterback was during that span, I'm going to go with Randall Cunningham. Um, he, was was just, saying, yeah. he was just cool. Like, how could you not like Randall <laughs> Cunningham out there? Cool as a cucumber, that man. Yeah, th throwing those bombs to... Uh, Randy Moss and Chris Carter like that. He would, he'd always crack that great big smile on his face when things were just, just going right, and he was in the zone. And yeah. 
Oh, uh, Randy Moss mentioned and a Tim Tebow mention. I, I, I don't know. And Randall too Cunningham. Much. Yeah. Too much. <laughs> on that note, we should uh, we should probably wrap it up a bit. Yeah, we're probably running probably long for this show. So uh, yeah, let's. Um, I would like to thank everyone for listening to the show and remind everybody to uh, join in on the discussions on Facebook. Um, we, we love do hearing have, from uh, everyone. Polls going too. Um, we, we, I'm constantly posting more discussions, more polls, um, surveys. I, I got lots of stuff going on on the on the fan page, facebookcom slash podcast. That's us. Go there, take the surveys, take the polls, uh, comment. We'd love all that. Uh, I wanted to thank everybody for listening, and I wanted to remind Minnesota to do one thing, and that's stay classy. <laughs>